Secret weapons. Radar. What would you have given to have seen these pictures in time? You, the world's enemy. You who destroyed the peace. Had you known these secrets before we did, you might have won the war. But you failed. And now we can tell you why you failed. We can tell you some of the things you wanted to know. We can tell you the secret of why your destroyer, Nizuki, failed to return to Kura Gulf on the night of July 6, 1943. One of our ships saw you. Yes, six miles away in the dark, we saw you. How? By radar. Electrical pulses transmitted with the speed of light, picking up echoes from the Nizuki. In the fire control director, men at work, watching small screens. That pip, that's your ship. Range for the gun, accurate within 10 yards. Another operator gets the bearing. He matches those pips by turning the entire director. The guns automatically follow. Information goes to plot. More trained men, more machines. Enemy course, 091, speed, 12 knots. Wind, 265, velocity, 8 knots. In fire control, within a minute, they know all they need to know about your ship. Commence firing, commence firing. The first salvo, a direct hit. That's why you never heard from the Mizuki again. Radar. How did we get such a weapon? At home, we had thousands of scientists at work, our best electronics engineers, with unlimited resources, and only one objective, to develop radar superior to yours. In radar schools, thousands of men were trained to become expert operators. It cost us hundreds of millions. What did it cost you, who once dominated the Pacific? And you, whose submarines almost won the Battle of the Atlantic. What happened? Why was the night no longer safe for your submarines? How could our bombers find them in the dark? The secret radar. This scope is a map of the surrounding ocean with our plane in the center. See that dot? That's your sub. The technique is simple. The radarman sights the target then guides the pilot in for the kill. Starboard. Steady. Starboard. One mile. Starboard. Starboard. At half a mile away, another secret weapon. The airborne searchlight. Just millions to know that secret. What did it cost you Nazis not to know it? And we had other expensive secrets. have heard of our greatest secrets from such plants as these. At a cost of two billion dollars, the atomic bomb. Now we are telling you some of our secrets. Why? Because today's weapons would not be good enough tomorrow. Because already we're working on new uses for atomic power. 
are new on secret. Remember, you who dream of world conquest, never again will we be caught unprepared. Remember how we united for war? We all had a part. We all contributed. Take it easy, fellows. Take it easy while you can. Combat Information Center is alert. Its radars probing the darkness, ready to give early warning of any unseen enemy. to arrive 6,000 yards, 40 degrees on the starboard bow of leading ship of Raid Able. Over. In combat, Wilco, out. Did you get that, Kent? Yeah. 6,000 yards, 40 degrees on starboard bow. Speed 3-0. Course 005. Time, 12 minutes. Time, this is combat. Force to attack point 005. Attack point in 12 minutes. Over. Roger. Prepare to fire five torpedoes, depth setting six feet. Action starboard. Over. It's combat. Roger. Out. Stand by for surface action. In the gun director, the fire control radar goes to work. Enemy force at 35,000 yards, bearing 344. Course 139, speed 30. Fantastic. But radar tells us all this. With radar, our ship can see through smoke, through fog, through darkness. Radar puts a finger on the unseen enemy, lets our guns reach out to destroy him before he even knows we're there. Raid Able, bearing 349, range 108-00. Two minutes to attack point. On combat, two minutes to attack point. Mount one, train out to starboard, match pointers. We can launch torpedoes any time now, but the closer you get, the better. So you can wait too long. What do you make of it? Hard to tell, sir. Two large ships and one smaller one. Rings on the nearest large one. Control, combat. Target able. Looks like two cruisers and a destroyer. Range closing. All guns, load. Gun one. Gun two. Gun three. Gun four. Gun five. We'll fire when we get about here. A raid able, bearing 350. Range 9800. Range 9800. Time, combat. We're in effective range for intermediate speed torpedoes. Range 8800. Time, combat. One minute to attack point. Con Roger, out. Con combat. We're close enough now for high speed torpedoes. Range 8000. <laughs> Range seven five double O. Range six five 
Combat, stand by. Fire one, fire one. Fire two, fire two. Fire three, fire three. Fire four, fire four. Fire five, fire five. ETA three minutes. Con, this is combat. The torpedo should hit in three minutes at zero one zero two. Suggest retirement course two five five. Control combat. Half salvo of torpedoes away. We're making a hundred and eighty degree turn. Action will be to port. Control I. All guns. Action to port. <laughs> Double O. Range four five double O. What's the old man gonna do? Kiss him? You can see the shells as they fly through space. There's the flag. In range, we're over. Down to double O. Ready? Fire salvo. Salvo fire, interval, four seconds. Scratch one enemy cruiser. We have met the enemy, and they are ours. Our radar found them through the darkness told us their course, their speed, their disposition. Radar guided our torpedoes, aimed our guns. Radar cost us hundreds of millions. And it was worth it. Our technical equipment is the best in the world. War bonds paid for it. But it will cost us millions more to maintain that superiority. Millions for further research. Millions for further development. The future security of our nation depends upon such development, and they are all expensive. Those millions must come from victory bonds. Buy bonds and hold them. It's early morning at a B-29 base in the Marianas. The big bombers are getting ready for a mission, and the men are getting ready. In the essentials, the briefing differs little from others. There's a target that'll be bombed. 
They will proceed to this point in space above the Earth, drop their bombs, and return without ever seeing the target. These are the instructions. The men are ready for the takeoff. Which are made of super forts is spanned over a thousand miles of trackless waters. The weather bears out the forecast. Clouds, heavy overcast, all the way to the target. At 23,000 feet, they're above it. Below and on lies the Japanese mainland, and somewhere beyond that, the target. If the enemy took comfort in the thought that the bombardier sees nothing more than this, they were living in a fool's paradise. For in a calculated instant, tons of high explosives, and yes, even the atomic bomb, would be sent away to the target, aimed by the miracle of radar. Before you now is the radar scope a small circular screen giving X-ray-like vision to the mysterious 11th member of the crew, the radar operator. Until recently, we've known little of what he does, and even less about the instruments he uses. Basically, radar equipment consists of a radio transmitter and receiver. The transmitter sends a radio beam earthward. If it strikes water, the beam is not reflected, the receiver picks up nothing, and the scope appears dark as it is now over the Pacific Ocean. But if the beam strikes a solid object, such as land, it's reflected and shows light on the scope. Watch. Something's coming in now at the upper left. Adjusting the receiver control sharpens the picture. There they are. Two islands, both with mountains on them. That should make them easy to identify. According to the charts, only two islands of this shape and contour lie off the southern coast of Honshu. The little one, Kojima, the other, Hachijojima. Two tiny dots on the face of the globe point the way for a cargo of destruction. Seven hours, ten minutes elapsed time. Almost a full day's work for most, but to the crews, a mission less than half sweated off. The picture on the scope warns of entry to the critical zone. The return shows a large landmass, Japanese coast, over a hundred miles of it. You see that bright spot at the top of the peninsula? Not exactly the picture in travel folders, but that's beautiful Fujiyama. Mount Fuji, nature's wonder, the tourist delight. Now, a beacon inviting disaster, a reference point for final calculations. Bombardier, this is radar operator, over. This is Bombardier, go ahead. The wind is from 268 degrees at 138 miles per hour. Ground speed on the bomb run, 394 miles per hour. The data taken from the electronic wonder instruments is converted to precision aiming, pinpoint bombing. One seven degrees right. Radar operator, this is Bombardier, over. Go ahead, Bombardier. The site's set up, we're ready to bomb. The bomb run begins with a turn directly over Fujiyama. When the bright spot that is Fuji touches the black line, the instructions are... Pilot, start one quarter needle with turn, rolling out on the heading of... Three one degrees. Roger. Bombardier, open bomb bay doors after turn. Roger. The moment for decision has arrived. The moment when the target must be singled out from hundreds of other invisible targets. Coastline with a large city. A peninsula jutting out in a bay. The city, Tokyo. This is the general target area. Northwest of Tokyo lies the specific target, the Kyushu Aircraft Factory at Kawago. A flick of the switch isolates the target image. And here it is, one tiny speck of light, the focal point for hundreds of giant bombers, for a thousand tons of bombs. 
Pilot, correct nine degrees right. Roger. Ready on 70 degrees. Ready? Mark. Mark. At the split second before the bombs are released, the radar operator sees this. Bombs away. And this is what the Jap sees. His cities, his factories, in ruins. A lot of you out there are probably asking, well, why show us this? The war's over. Well, we wanted to let you in on one of the big secrets of the war. Thought you might be interested. Yes, you're right. The war is over, and we won it. And by we, I mean the foot soldiers, the men at sea, the crews who flew the missions, you men and women who worked in the factories, the scientists who gave us radar and the atomic bomb and every last man, woman, and child who bought war bonds. That was all part of winning the war. But now there's a matter of the peace. Most of the men in uniform will be returned to civilian life. Likewise, factory workers will go back to producing civilian goods. But our scientists must go on perfecting old inventions and developing new ones for the security of our nation at peace. And you who bought bonds in support of the war effort can buy a share in the peace by investing in bonds today. How about it?